bizarre things found underwater. Welcome to Deep Sea Sunday. Number 10, Wave Farm. You could think of a wave farm as a wind farm, but underwater. This new system of power generation operates under the sea, keeping it safe from large storms above and unseen from the shore, relieving urban blight. The power is generated by using a large float submerged in the region. As wave motion lifts and lowers the float, it drives a pump and generator. The power is sent back to shore through subsea cables for export to the grid and to power desalination plants. By the end of 2020, wave farms are expected to power 6,000 homes. Number 9. Hearing things. A strange pinging noise can be heard from the Sea of North Canada, and no one knows where it's coming from. Hunters in the region could hear the sound during the summer and noticed it scared off several animals. The bizarre noise appears to originate from the sea floor and has become a large enough concern that the Canadian military is being called in to ferret out the calls. The noise is audible in major hunting areas in the winter and summer. Experts noted that bowhead whales and seals use sea passage in the region as migratory routes. Normally, there would be many such animals in the area. This year, however, as the pinging noise occurred, there were none. Several theories for the origin of the noise have surfaced. Some scientists say a nearby mining company is to blame due to their sonar surveys of the area. Greenpeace is another theory. That group has been known to implement sonars on the seafloor to drive sea mammals out of the range of hunters. Both the mining company and Greenpeace deny any such activities on their respective parts. Number 8 diving bell spiders. These arachnids are found across northern Asia and into Europe. Like any other spider, they breathe air, but reside under the water using the diving bell webs for which they are named. Diving bells are constructed of sheets of waterproof silk and a protein-based hydrogel and spun between water plants which are submerged, then inflated with air so the spiders can exist underwater. Because the air bubble shrinks, the spider has to regularly replenish its oxygen supply. Number 7. Lost and Found A so-called mystery object found by a diver has attracted the attention of the Royal Canadian Navy, and they're being sent to investigate the object, which might be a forgotten Mark IV nuclear bomb from the Cold War. The diver found the object near Banks Island in Canada, a site that corresponds to the location of a U.S. bomber crash in 1950, after which the nuclear bomb was lost. The diver said it looked like a bagel cut in half with bolts molded into it. He first thought he had found a UFO. But after looking up photos of the object online, he realized it was a nuclear bomb. However, experts from the Canadian military say records indicate the lost bomb was actually a dummy capsule. Number 6. Whaling songs. These massive marine mammals are known to sing, but researchers have never completely understood exactly how or why the creatures do so, nor why some species can project the songs and calls for great lengths underwater. But now, elements of whale songs that were previously unknown may have been revealed. Experts studied two components of humpback whale songs off the coast of Maui. The first component was pressure waves emitted by the songs. That's the type of sound that vibrates in our ears and allows us to hear. The the second component was particle vibration emitted by the songs. Those are physical vibrations caused by sound. Those vibrations were found to travel around 656 feet under the water and likely farther than that. Experts think this is a means by which the animals communicate with each other and locate one another in the seas. Number 5. More than $50 million in World War II silver was recovered from the ocean floor in 2015. The British steamship SS City of Cairo was sunk by a U-boat nearly 500 miles south of St. Helena in the Atlantic Ocean and sank more than 5,000 meters to the ocean floor. In 1942, London had called in $50 million worth of silver rupees to help fund the war effort against the Third Reich, but the ship never made it to port. Until 2011, the ship and its cargo were presumed lost. British-led recovery teams managed to raise the 100 tons of coins in the deepest salvage operation in history, which was actually completed in 2013, but announced two years later. The coins have since been melted down and sold. An undisclosed sum was split between the British Treasury and the salvages. 
number four. Up and down. Did you know that three miles under the ocean surface, you could find the rocket engines that took Apollo 11 on its historic voyage to put the first men on the moon? The engines were discovered by remote-operated vehicles that used black lights to authenticate identifying markings. The recovered engines logged only two minutes of actual flight time and burned over four and a half million pounds of fuel. The empty engines detached and were returned to Earth by retro rockets that deposited them into waters off the floor. Florida coast, where they lay for over four decades. The engines were confirmed one day before the 44th anniversary of the moon landing, and they were recovered by Bezos Expeditions. And if that name sounds familiar, well, it should. Jeff Bezos is the CEO of Amazon.com. Number three. Underwater Museum. Would you like to see Egyptian tombs and skeletons underwater, among other bizarre sites? The Groobsley Alpen Aquarium is open for five months a year, and exhibitions in this underwater museum feature replicas of ancient artifacts like old cannons, Buddhist statues, and even the Statue of Liberty, but that one's not built to scale. It's located in an Austrian mountain lake, and it's become a popular spot for adventurous divers. Some amazing pictures of the location were taken by Austrian divers Michael Wieberberger and Florian Feldgrill, and I hope I got those names right. Take a look at all the incredible scenery, like the skeleton reclining against a treasure chest while seeming to look at statues of ancient Egyptian figures, or the statue of Christ the Redeemer, and the scary-looking alligator looking on the seabed. Now that's a statue too. Besides the incredible museum, the lake is also packed with various wildlife, and those are not statues. Number two, two-headed sharks. It seems these two-headed creatures are appearing at unprecedented rates worldwide, and experts don't seem to have an answer why. The mutated creatures first started making notable appearances in 2008, when the embryo of a two-headed blue shark was found off the coast of Australia. On a recent Trending Tuesday, we reported a story about a two-headed sawtail catfish shark embryo that was grown in a lab in Spain. It turns out, this was the first known example of a two-headed shark born by a shark species that that lays eggs. It's speculated that such embryos don't survive long after they hatch, which might explain why no two-headed egg-laying sharks have never been found before. Reasons for the mutation include pollution, viral infections, or overfishing. As shark populations dwindle, their gene pool shrinks, increasing the chance of inbreeding, and that carries a high risk of passing on genetic abnormalities. Number one. In 2013, off the coast of Zakynthos in Greece, snorkelers found the remains of stone columns and paving stones covered in algae. It seemed to be a historic find, a lost Greek city under the sea. Oddly though, no other trace of life, such as pottery, could be found there. Why was that? Well, it turns out the so-called lost city has a far more mundane origin. After analyzing the location, archaeologists have determined that those colonnades and paved courtyards were simply part of geological logical features that formed naturally up to five million years ago. The seemingly man-made structures were formed by methane gas bubbling up from below the seabed. Bacteria within the sediment metabolized the gas and a chemical reaction formed dolomite, which works as a natural cement. This in turn solidified into slabs, columns, and tubes. As the sediment surrounding them eroded, the objects were left upon the seabed, where they appeared to be manufactured by humans. 